backstory, I studied CS in college. Uh, that was my first time programming. But by the time that I reached my senior year, I kind of decided like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be a developer because being a developer is just like being a code monkey in a room by yourself. Uh, and I also think I didn't really have any good role models when I was in college, uh, like people in tech who look like me who were doing work that I wanted to do. Um, but so one of the things that I did do in college that I really liked was being a TA for the like intro, intro level uh, programming CS class. Uh, and so I really loved like helping people go from not understanding a thing and feeling really overwhelmed to being like, okay, I kind of know what's going on and I'm like more confident in my abilities to make a thing. Yeah. Um, and so after, after college, I went into education instead. Uh, so I did an AmeriCorps program called City Year for a year uh, where I worked in a third grade classroom uh, with students there doing like in-classroom support. Uh, and I like taught my third graders how to code on our lunch breaks, which was really fun. Uh, I would just like bring a couple of them upstairs and we would do the like code.org curriculum on my iPad. Oh wow! Uh, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. And that, like seeing how excited they got about it made it feel, made, I don't know, it just made programming seem more fun. Uh, whereas, you know, in college, it's like, I'm doing this for the grade and so that I can graduate. Um, and so after, after that year was over, then I, I went and worked at code.org as an intern on their educate, <laughs> excuse me, on their education team. Uh, so I was like helping write curriculum instead. Uh, and then from there, I went to work at Girls Who Code, uh, who is a nonprofit focused on like getting middle school and high school girls interested in computer science. Uh, and one of the things that we did there uh, was we wrote all of these like women in tech spotlights to basically highlight the work that a woman is doing uh, in in the tech industry and just like how they're using programming to make an impact in their communities. Uh, and so like while I was writing those, I kind of realized like, oh, there are ways to, to like help the world uh, for lack of a less cheesy phrase uh, by, by being a programmer. And so after that, I got a job, like an entry level software developer consultant job uh, at a consultancy called ThoughtWorks. Um, oh, I've heard of them. Was this, a, yeah, they're was this really based great. in New York or which um, office? They, so I, at ThoughtWorks, I was based out of their San Francisco office. Their headquarters is in Chicago, but they kind of have a bunch of different uh, areas like hubs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. International as well. I met a few, yeah, yeah. few folks in uh, Brazil uh, down when I said yeah. uh, Python Brazil. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, they're really great. And I love them. Uh, and so I, I liked being a developer. I feel like I really leveled up my technical skills while I was working there. But something that I was really missing was the education piece and kind of having that be a formal part of my job description. Yeah. Um, and so I saw a couple months ago uh, posting on Twitter for the for the Gatsby documentation team. Um, and so applied, applied to that, uh, because it's, it felt like a much better blend of the, the technical stuff that I had learned and also the education piece that I felt like I had been missing. Cool. And so I got here. Excellent. Are you originally from the, the Bay area? I am. Okay. So where'd you study yeah, CS East then? Bay. Well, I studied CS because I was really into theater when I was in high school. Uh, <laughs> okay, and I did a lot of like, yeah, I did a lot of technical theater. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really liked lighting design when I was like a junior in high school, which is when you're starting to look at colleges. Uh, and for some reason in my head, I thought like, okay, I'm good at math and science, but I don't want to be a doctor. So that's how I got to engineering. And then like computer electrical engineers is maybe like lighting, which is not at all. Uh, and so I just kind of picked it because I don't know, I was 18 and didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, do you know, uh, we're in the Bay area. Uh, do you know Chloe Condon, who's a DevRel at, um, at Microsoft? 
It originally came from Theater yeah. and uh, learned, oh, how to code. Awesome. learned how to code yeah. through um, Hackbright, actually, which is a local dev boot camp, or not Very dev cool. boot camp, but a boot camp. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, fascinating. Uh, I'm always <laughs> interested with people's transition stories of getting into tech, because yeah, you have a CS background, uh, but you ended up eventually getting there through education. Um, yeah. Which is, uh, yeah, it's intriguing. It's like something to think about too, as well, for folks who are just now getting started, is that there's no like, golden path for getting into engineering or programming uh, and getting a tech job. It's it's just about interest and sort of like continuing down that path, uh, which it sounds like that's what you're doing with code.org and teaching kids and uh, which you're yeah, doing. Totally. And I definitely think like as somebody who was sort of a career change, um, like bringing in a lot of skills from teaching or from like whatever background you came from before kind of gives you a leg up in a way because there are like people who don't have great communication skills or they're like oh we need to communicate this idea so that other people can understand it how do we do that and so that's something that like i have a lot of practice doing that maybe somebody else who's just coming straight from a program like a, a degree program doesn't know so use use whatever skills you have yeah exactly uh, and speaking of skills, those skills have gotten you here to working at Gatsby now uh, full time uh, for the company. And uh, we're going to talk about that yep. uh, in a sec. But I just wanted to say hello to uh, Ritmang uh, for saying hello in the chat. Ishnan, uh, I'm not sure if that's a hello or yeah, uh, but you do have a, an emoji there uh, or emote. And then someone's, uh, you do have a fan in the chat too, is Kel Kelhuzi? <laughs> Kel <-Huzi? laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a handle that's familiar to you. I know sometimes our Twitch handles don't translate to our our GitHub handles. Yeah, that's that's actually my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, well, welcome. Number Hi. one fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so do you want to talk about Gatsby and what, I guess, can you give like the overview, the brief overview, cliff note to what Gatsby is so folks who aren't familiar? Yeah, so Gatsby, like fundamentally, is a framework that helps you build React sites. Uh, so one of the nice things that it does is it kind of bakes in a bunch of uh, like things that would be hard to do if you were just a single developer building your own site or building a site for like an agency. Um, so like we try and think about things like performance and accessibility and security and kind of bake that into the framework so that you don't have to spend as much time thinking about it and you can just focus on like how do I build the React components and the pages and like where do I pull in data from? Um, so that's that's kind of the gist of it. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'm I'm a fan of Gatsby. I've been using Gatsby off and on for the past couple of years. I guess since I've been nice. around. And uh, yeah, I, I like the the idea of like static generation, which Gatsby sort of came out the gate pretty strong uh, back when React was still sort of figuring itself out. Um, so like, being able to have that context but also in my modern web development javascript framework world um which is react that's what i spent a lot of my time in so yeah I'm, I'm familiar with it hopefully uh anybody in the chat if you've used gatsby let us know let us know what projects you're you're working on that use gatsby or what projects you would like to work on uh and then we can see if uh it's a good fit this might, might be an example actually for you too as well yeah um, <laughs> which i want to talk about your role at gatsby uh and what you're sort of focused on day to day yeah, so I, I am on, well, I'm a documentation engineer and the company's kind of in a transition period right now where we're moving from having like a documentation team uh, to having more of this like cross disciplinary squad model gotcha. uh, where now it's like the squads are kind of the new teams where you've got like a designer and developers and like a product manager and a documentation engineer. Um, so rather than rather than like just being the sole person writing the documentation, the goal is to kind of move towards a place where engineers can write their own documentation and I can sort of be a consultant uh, and like help give guidance on how might you best organize the information and like explain a really technical concept in a way that like newcomers can understand. Yeah, and the, at I like that model, and um, it's something that we do at GitHub. I, I, so I don't do full-time engineering at GitHub. I do DevRel, so I do a lot nice. of in interactions with the community as well as with the engineering teams. 
Uh, but what they do is when they ship features, primarily I've seen this with the API is we have a change log and everybody has mm. to ship a change log and that helps the documentation. Uh, actually documentation has to get shipped alongside the feature and the feature <laughs> is new, um, which I like. I like seeing that things get blocked if there are no docs because uh, there's nothing yeah. worse than trying to do something and you don't know how to do it because no one's explained it. Right, exactly. It's like if you've delivered a feature but nobody knows how to use it. Did you really deliver the feature? It's like if the if a tree falls and nobody hears it. Yeah. Did you really ship it to production? <laughs> yeah, and there's a question in uh, Arn for VV. Um, I don't know if you know this. I, I know the answer, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll pitch it to you. Uh, what are advantages advantages of Gatsby besides server side rendering? Um, I mean, I think I think it's. The stuff that I kind of alluded to before where there are performance benefits where like your site, ideally, if, if everything has gone right, your site should be really fast uh, because at build time, it sort of goes through and does, um, without getting too in the weeds, it like does all of the building of like the specific pages and pulling in data. Um, yeah. and, and so that happens when you compile it so that when you run the site, all of that all that data is already in in the page and so uh it loads really quickly um yeah and I, i've got the uh like literally from the website some bullet points as hey, well there we go <laughs> so having the incremental builds uh so if you do build like your about page the about page gets a built uh gets built as opposed to the entire site um i think the some of the built-in image handling um has been nice uh, and it's something that people kind of point to um, as sort of the model for progressive loading images. Uh, I've seen Kyle, Kyle the, being the CEO and um, the, I guess, the original creator of Gatsby. Uh, I've seen him talk at different conferences and meetup here about that one feature. Uh, and hands mm. down, that's been something that I've been super excited about since the beginning and seeing other people sort of lead with that as an example of how you handle images. So uh, definitely check out the examples and check out the blog posts and talks around Gatsby. Uh, there's a a very large community around it. So uh, Arn, you, there's definitely plenty of information out there. We can share links later. Uh, and we can also walk through that in a moment too. And then um, Prayag S, uh, apologies on the pronunciation of the Twitch handle, but uh, can you talk more about the documentation engineering role, which you're our first documentation engineer Woo. person in that, that field that's been on Open Source Friday. And uh, I think it might be something that most people don't think of as like a like a role you could do as an engineer. So do you want to um, speak this a little bit more and like what that entails and like what sort of companies are looking for that role? Um, I know less about what kind of companies are looking for that role, sort of like anecdotally without any yeah. direct links. I think that there is kind of a movement right now where a lot of companies are kind of starting up either a DevRel team or sort of like I've seen developer educator or something like that some kind of title where it's like your focus is on teaching people uh which still requires like the technical background because you have to know what you're talking about yeah. uh but but like trying to focus on communicating what's happening internally either externally or sometimes even to like other people in the company like something something that i'm thinking about now and full disclosure i'm also new to gatsby i've only been there this is week three or week four or something like that. Um, so a lot of a lot of things are still kind of being decided on uh, in terms of what I'm gonna do. Um, but something something that I'm thinking about is like there's a lot of sort of pockets of knowledge internally that yeah. even our internal engineers sometimes are like, oh, I only know about this thing because I heard it in a Slack channel or like somebody I had to ask for help to figure that out. Um, so my goal is to how to try and figure out how to make that easier. Um, just like making sure that the right information is documented so people can find it. Uh, and then also like once they found it, is it actually useful? Like, does it help them solve whatever problem yeah. that they're trying to solve? Yeah. And I would say too, as well, um, like being able to explain things and being, having that being that introduction to how people can explore a feature is it's huge because I've, I've yeah. used a lot of products. I've used a lot of open source libraries that I had to figure it out on my own. And I think the, when you have that assumption of like people will figure this out, that's when you know you, you're failing. Um, right. But if it's something that's intuitive and like people discover things naturally and can discover how to sort of advance to the next level, um, 
that's where you want to be. So like being able to really slow down and make sure people can use the thing uh, is super helpful. Um, and I just want to mention too, uh, as well, this is, this conversation is about Gatsby. So folks are uh, looking for comparisons. Like we are going to do comparisons. Uh, but if you do want to learn about Next.js, we do have an entire interview we did with Next.js. It's go to youtube.com slash GitHub where you can learn about Next and their benefits and how you can contribute to this project. Uh, but I do want to know how to, I guess, how, if I wanted to jump into Gatsby, uh, maybe I've used it a couple times or maybe I just want to try it out for the first time. Uh, I guess, what is the sort of like central location for folks to basically try it out? Yeah, so there's kind of like two tiers of getting started with Gatsby. There's like, how do I get started with Gatsby on my own project? Like I want to use Gatsby as a vehicle to build something else. Uh, and then the second part, I guess, maybe more advanced is like, if you want to contribute to Gatsby itself, like as a tool or the documentation. Yeah. Uh, so if you're totally new to Gatsby and want to get started, uh, this is the docs page. Uh, we do have a tutorial that's kind of a step-by-step -step, um, guide through how to set things up and t tells you a little bit of information about like just what even is Gatsby, um, how do we do styling, how do we do data, like where does the data come from, um, and so that's that's a good entry point if you're looking for uh, like a total introduction. Um, and then if you want to contribute, there's kind of two ways that you can contribute. You can contribute to like the Gatsby framework itself, like the code, um, yeah. or you can contribute to that docs site. Um, yeah, and so this this is the GitHub repo for both of them. Um, if you look at yeah, this, uh, this use by number is oh, wow. massive. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Excellent. But yeah. This is the repo that we're sort of this perusing through. Uh, I think a lot of people, they first sort of jump into a repo to for contribution and to see what's happening. So they, I like to use it as a gauge to see if like, is the thing being used? So like already mm. I can see there's a quarter million people using it in projects, at least that are open source, I think is how that number works. Um, and then as far as like issues, pull requests, you can sort of get a gauge of like how things are sort of operating. You can see one hour ago, Lico, which I know Lico, um, <laughs> uh, definitely seen around. He, um, had a commit. They actually got merged in an hour ago, which is pretty cool. So you can see there's some pretty good activity, um, happening. Um, but I think if we, if we focus more on the, con the contribute to Gatsby for the rest of the conversation, I think we could, uh. I think it's be a lot of sort of nuggets we can sort of discover together. Um, but I see the contributing ND is usually the first place I look at, and then I find out it takes me directly to here, to how to contribute. So I actually had this open in a tab. Um, nice. For folks who are looking to get their first contribution during Hacktoberfest or first contribution just in general, uh, it's definitely a great place to, to start for sure. Um, so do you... Uh, I guess week three, um, but <laughs> I I'm curious to understand like how Gatsby sort of handles participation in the repo. Is there like open source man managers, maintainers, or is it similar to your yeah. model of documentation where it's up to the engineering team? Yeah, so it's 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 definitely an open source project. So we we have in the issues, we have like community members reporting things that are wrong, um, making suggestions. Um, and so all of the issues that are opened get automatically tagged with, mm, I forget the exact label, but it's like there's a bot that adds a tag that's like triage needed or something like that. Um, yeah, so, and then, and then there's like a rotation within our engineering team uh, to to like go through everything that needs triage and basically decide like which team within Gatsby is responsible for this. So for docs, a lot of times they'll add these like status. Uh, there's one yeah, that like yeah, status docs needs review. docs review. Yeah, so that, that's on me. Uh, <laughs> and so then I'll go and like look at it and give comments and kind of move it yeah. from. The point it's at now to when it's done yeah it looks like you've been tagged too as well so <laughs> yeah that this one this one was kind of this one was like a pr that was opened before an issue and so uh part uh, of our gotcha. process is like oh we need to have the issue so that we can kind of like have the discussion 
beforehand. Yeah, and that's um, actually um, I, I, not to, to move too fast over that, but something that I mm-hmm. think is missing a lot of times when people go to do uh, contributions in Hacktoberfest or just in general, um, you could spend a lot of time working on something that you think belongs in the code base or belongs <laughs> in the documentation. But if you didn't have the conversation before, then it, you're going to have a very, like, if it doesn't belong, then it's going to be a right. very bad experience for right. you and the, the maintainer. Um, yeah. So open up issues. Highly yeah. recommend it. It definitely doesn't feel good, like, as a maintainer either to be like, oh, you worked so hard on this, but we can't use it. So, yeah, open open issues. Excellent. Um, uh, Sean actually had a question about how do you know, how do you figure out, going back to documentation real quick. Mm-hmm. How do you know what to document and whether documentation is hitting the mark? Like, is there a way to target and get yeah. metrics? Or... Um, well, metrics is kind of a secondary piece. Yeah. It's, it's like the follow-up. Like, you have to do that after you've figured out what to write. For me, like, the thing that I try and keep in mind... So, like, from, from curriculum writing, there's this framework called Understanding by Design... Okay. Uh, and it's a it's a really widely used framework, not in the like technical sense, but of just yeah. like way of thinking about things. Yeah, I'm just looking um, for this uh, a good blog post on this or something. Or yeah, book. there there's yeah, it's it's a whole book, and there's a bunch of a bunch of different people have have written about it. But the basic idea is like you start with your end goal first. Like you always start with what do you want learners or like users in this case to be able to do and to be able um there's a real focus on transferable skills so like what do you need to understand in this context but also what do you need to know to like be able to go off and do things on your own um and so that's kind of that's always my starting point is thinking about like what is what is the goal what are we trying to help users achieve And then from there, you can kind of break that down into like, okay, I want them to understand uh, like how data works in Gatsby. And then you can like break it down from there and go into like, what are the, like the next stage is assessment. Like what, what are the things that I need to be able to see a user do to prove that they have this understanding. And then from there, you can kind of figure out like, okay, what's the best way to teach students each of those things. Um, so for, for me, it's always about like starting with the big picture and then kind of breaking it down and getting more granular from there. Uh, and I think, I think that sometimes the tendency is for people to be like, oh, I understand this concept and I want to just like jump right into teaching that thing. But I think, and this is, this is maybe a kind of a problem with the way that our docs have grown so far is like, then there's less of a cohesive path through yeah. things it's like you've got a really good doc on you know bringing in data from wordpress or whatever but like how does that fit into the whole and into this like learner's journey through your repository no yeah i uh i am very much thinking about that right now for myself because i teach a lot about github actions and i'm doing uh, youtube videos nice. primarily as the medium to do that mainly because uh, i'm just exploring the medium right now <laughs> and i I'm thinking about how each video connects to the, the last one. Uh, Cause I yeah. think with like this understanding, like how YouTube, I don't understand YouTube's algorithm by any <laughs> means, but understanding how there is an algorithm that you want people to click through to the next one. So you make sure the subject matter of the project is consistent. So that way if you can ref- easily reference and say, I'm not going to talk about Docker this video because I spent the whole video on Docker. So please go back right. to that video and then you can still progress forward. But if you happen to land, on video five or the doc page three, you can always refer to page one and two. And it's something that totally. I, guess, I guess if you have, as, as you're explaining, if you have the big picture, um, you can then have the sort of outline and steps eventually, that, as long as you know what the goal is, which is right. teaching Gatsby in this this manner. Yeah, and I think I think like with documentation, especially it it's important to think about the sort of like mental model that users are constructing as they're going through your documentation and like don't don't get too in the weeds before they kind of have a big picture understanding um because yeah there's like no sense in in going into super deep detail if they like 
are just it's just all gonna go over their heads anyway. yeah and that's the um i don't know how long you've been doing react programming at all uh actually how long have you been doing react uh a couple of years okay yeah so i've been doing it since the beginning uh which is not nice. a flex i'm just saying <laughs> but one thing that i like kind of got me like i guess got me annoyed of react because i didn't do react right, right away is that every time i went to like a blog post or documentation people wanted to teach me the virtual dom and all i wanted to do mm. was make a website and yeah. when you spend the entire time at the beginning of every single blog post conference talk tutorial like let's talk about the virtual dom and it's like the right. um that one meme of the guy who talks about aliens on the oh. history channel documentary and it's like <laughs> aliens like that's how I feel about every time someone starts talking about JSX or talk about the virtual DOM, uh, when at the end of the day, all I want to do is make a website. <laughs> like I'm not right. really interested in like the nuance. And if I if I am like, let's all as collectively as documentation people and and teachers and educators point to the one central source, which hopefully is the React right. doc, docs, and not try to re-explain the same thing that everybody's out there. Exactly. It's like, give them, give them what they need when they need it. And then I think that there's, there's definitely a lot of power in like linking away to other resources yeah. so that if you choose, like, if that's a thing that interests you, then go down that path. But otherwise, yeah, like, and focus. That, <laughs> that is something that too, um, uh, I talked to uh, Michael Jackson and Ryan Florence about this and they do training on specifically React training and Neat. they spend way more time talking about react and they learn how to do that even though we have this like virtual dom the router like how graphql or a redux or whatever all that works like they do a very good job of actually avoiding like talking about all the stuff you don't need to talk about and focusing yeah. just on this thing uh which is react or at this point like we're talking about gatsby so just focus on the feature in gatsby that we need to sh share and get, get across and be able to have those sort of like web like the internet of gatsby knowledge <laughs> Um, sort of linking all to, all the way to this like one central thing that we sort of landed on. So, uh, sorry, the, my excitement and your, the way you're explaining this is like, yes, this makes so much sense. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. Nice. Excellent. So I think we took a little tangent on like talking about like higher level, like how documentation, how do you sort of like attack documentation. <laughs> how to teach a person a thing. But I think coming back to this this uh, issue and how the labels are reviewed, I did notice that um, Gasbot, I think it was the bot you were. Um, yeah chatting uh mentioning yeah like so that happens yeah. uh yeah i don't actually know how it works but i know that when you open a new issue it'll add that triage needed uh label to it yes. and then one of our engineers will go through and decide like okay who internally needs to look at this um and then from there, we'll sort of have a discussion about like, okay, what's the action plan for this issue? Uh, if if you are a contributor and decide to open an issue, um, make sure to have like reproducible steps if you find a bug or something like that, um, because that really helps us figure out like, is this really a problem? Is this just a problem with like your local setup or like with Gatsby as a whole? Uh, and so that's, that's definitely something to make sure that you include. Um, and then at least something that I try to do is like clearly outline um, what the steps are to resolve this issue, kind of like acceptance criteria uh, or really just like a checklist of like, these are all the things you have to have before we can close this issue. So that then the sort of next piece is either you or some other person who sees the issue can decide, oh, this is a problem that I know how to solve. Uh, I want to work on it. Um, and so then at that point, you would kind of comment on this issue saying like, can I work on this? And then one of the internal engineers would say like, yes, you can, and then yeah. assign it to you. Uh, and then you go off and write code and, or docs. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it are. sounds like a magical place and uh, yeah. <laughs> makes me want to go grab an issue. Um, but I'm looking at this and what we, I think this might, I'm not sure if this is a Gatsby employer. Actually, I could actually find out. Um, it doesn't look like a Gatsby employee, but mm. this person opened up a PR, um, and but there's no issue attached. Ah, yeah. Uh, is it a docs one? Uh, I believe so. Documentation JS example, caption string. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't have to dig in specifically to this one, but I was just, uh, I was going to comment on the fact that 
Oh, did we just we just got a new one. Triage needed two minutes ago. <gasps> wow. Uh, but I was going to comment on how little issues are here that need triage. So it seems like someone's working yeah. right now. Yeah, there, there's, uh, I think, yeah, I think I saw in standups, somebody was going to work on triaging things. Oh, excellent. Um, but yeah, so then, then sort of the next step is to go and look for, um, cause, cause once things get triaged, sometimes it's like, oh, this is a problem that we need to handle internally. And so we'll have our developers work on it. But sometimes it's a thing where like, oh, this is something that needs to be fixed and is maybe a good like entry point for somebody who's new to the repo. Um, and so in that case, there's a different label that will apply. Um, right now, because it's Hacktoberfest, it's the Hacktoberfest label yeah. uh, created. Uh, and I guess when it's not Hacktoberfest, there's a help wanted label. Yeah. Um, so that's that's another one to look at next month um yeah very but cool. so if if you want to contribute to the repo that's a good place to start is like look for those two labels separately together um oh there's also one that's good first issue which if you're totally new is a good place to start yeah which i think i saw at least one there uh, yeah right now we kind of have the good first issue alongside a bunch of the hacktoberfest ones yeah um yeah, so it's a good a good starting place. Yeah, has have you had a I guess Hacktoberfest where we're at week two at this point? Have you had a mm -hmm. lot of people sort of jumping in and asking questions about issues in Hacktoberfest? Um, um <laughs> yeah, actually for so part of my job when I first started was like identifying, oh, these issues would be good for Hacktoberfest and like getting them ready. So putting in those like lists of steps that need to be done for each issue. Uh <laughs> but then it was like you know, two or three days before October started, and I would like add the label, and then almost immediately somebody would pick it up, and I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm glad that you're so enthusiastic about contributing, but you're like, wait two days." Uh, so, so yeah, a bunch, a bunch of the issues have uh, have been picked up. Yeah, it looks um, like there's quite a few people who are asking about this one, and Liko is uh, going back. Um, yeah, what is this one? Uh, this one is simple Gatsby canonical URLs protocol bug. Ooh, interesting. So I'm not even sure what RHEL canonical canonical is. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it looks like um, looks like it's doing something. They found an issue and uh, they have reproducible steps too, which is um, valuable to have. Um, and this is something that I've actually started doing um, for my good first issues because I find good first issues are not meant for like. I'm just going to throw a bunch of easy stuff that I don't want to do. It's more of like, mm -hmm. I want to throw a bunch of easy things that people can have breadcrumbs into the contributing to the project and then right. join the community, like join the discord, yeah. join the Slack or whatever it is uh, and feel like you're a part of it. Um, so like actually having a solution um, for how to yeah. fix it or a kind of like a rough idea how I would do it myself is something I've been starting to do uh, pretty regularly in my issues. Yeah. And I think that that's Great, because it's it's like scaffolding their experience pretty much. Uh, Cause like there's such a huge learning curve if this is your first time contributing to open source in general, just like the whole, how do I fork a thing? And then how do I open a pull request? And what is a pull request? Like that, that's like enough to focus on for your first thing without <laughs> yeah. also needing to dive into the complexities of this code base that you're looking at for the first time. Yeah, and I would say anybody who is uh, at that point that Megan just described, uh, we do have an intro to GitHub courses on lab.github.com. Uh, so definitely check this out. Um, I should probably, I should have had a link ready for that, but um, <laughs> they're all self-paced learning. It's actually built on the same technology that your uh, your GasBot is built on. Oh, neat. So it integrates with, uh, with uh, GitHub's API directly. And so you integrate, you learn through GitHub PRs and GitHub repos. So it's a, Unique way to learn some of this stuff. But yeah, now back from our uh, commercial break and <laughs> we'll continue on this. Always be uh, always be selling. Yeah. It's good. It's connecting people with, with new learning resources. Excellent. We got, there's a lot of thank yous actually in the chat and I appreciate everybody who's following the channel. If you want to learn more about open source and how to contribute and talk to project maintainers like Megan uh, from Gatsby, uh, just hit the follow and you get notifications every time we go live uh, on this channel to talk about open source. So the, yeah, so it looks like based on the, the Hacktoberfest label, you've got a lot of uh, back and forths on folks who are interested 
in working on this. Um, none of these folks look like they're all, any of them look like Gatsby employees. Looks like a bunch of people oh, in the yeah, community. Oh, yeah, that one's, Peter's one of ours. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm thrown off because, like, with GitHub, we have a giant staff label. So sometimes I just as I uh. associate that with companies. But uh, not everybody gets that privilege, I guess. <laughs> um, but, yeah, very cool. So Peter was in there and providing, uh, even as of two hours, one hour ago, it looks like we're, we have some active communication, which sometimes could be a concern for folks who want to contribute with Hacktoberfest. And sometimes, like myself, I have to wait like a day before I can respond because I've got a couple other things to do. My project's kind of mm -hmm. small. Right. Uh, but with Gatsby, there's people who are ready and willing and it's a good way to get involved. Oh, this looks interesting. Gatsby oh, Hacktoberfest yeah. 2020. Should have started with that, I guess. Yeah, this is sort of our like umbrella issue that's giving you some introduction of like how Hacktoberfest works and like how to find good uh, labels in our repo. Oh, and also plug for swag. Uh, if you do a con contribution, I think if you scroll down in here, there's a link to a form or something like that where um, after you contribute, you can fill out a form uh, and then go. they'll send you some like fun glow in the dark Gatsby stickers for Halloween theme. Oh, excellent. That is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't spam it though, because it does verify to see if you actually made a pull request. So yeah. come help us and then get your swag. <laughs> I'll give that a heart. I'm not sure if I'm supposed Aww. to heart it, but uh, uh, I like That's that. Okay. That's a uh, hacktobering. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. All the instructions. Yeah. It looks like there's some customer support <laughs> tickets coming in too as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very cool. I like that uh, Gatsby actually took a time to... Um, Kind of announce their intentions at Hacktoberfest. I think this year we've uh, we've focused, uh, and I say we, uh, the Hacktoberfest <laughs> team has pivoted into the opt-in model for Hacktoberfest. Mm -hmm. So uh, projects that are opted in, which I know Gatsby is, I've seen them in the list, um, can help people get their Hacktoberfest T-shirt or tree planted. Um, consider planting a tree this year, and uh, but in addition to that, you can get some pretty cool stickers, which I did not know about. Nice. Yeah, very cool. Love stickers. <laughs> you can never have too many stickers. Yeah, no, if I had my sticker cam on, I'd share it, but uh, I didn't have it set up. I'm still, <laughs> this is my third week using um, this setup, so I don't have my all my other cameras set up to properly share in my office, but someday. Everybody watch older videos to see my uh, my sticker. I have, a, <laughs> I have a camera that actually sits behind my laptop, so I can switch to, like, before we went and oh. grab water, before we started, I usually switched to the... Um, the sticker cam and uh nice yeah it's a nice little easter egg but looks like yeah so i guess at this point we sort of got the introduction to you and gatsby um talk about help wanted did you want to look at um an issue you had in mind or do you just want to pick one blind and we can sort of walk through um, that would have been a good idea i should have picked one um let's see i'm trying to think of which ones don't already have people on them yeah, we could also oh. do this little assign to nobody flag. And this one other thing, uh, also a brief commercial break. Uh, I've been doing a YouTube series called Get Action Traction. And I built this action, uh, which I Gatsby doesn't have to use this, but I'm just sharing it <laughs> for folks who have similar issues of assigning, assigning issues to people. I built an action to so people can take action uh, and assign themselves to issues. And I do this out of necessity for myself because I don't have a team and I, my project, we have like a handful of contributors, uh, but it's an action where you just write dot take in the comments of the issue. And then that person who said dot take, it assigns them to through the action spot. Um, so folks who are Ooh. interested in something like this, all the code is open source and freely licensed. So feel free, feel free to take it and do your will and whatever you would like to do or embed it into Gasbot um, too as well, which is... Yeah. Yeah, I, I wrote this in Bash uh, mainly because I was learning Bash while writing this. Um, but you can see I just have a, a simple curl command that assigns whoever commented to that issue. And that's how it works. That's cool. But moving back to Gatsby. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we don't have to... Uh, I'm actually curious about it. More inclusive la language in Docs. Oh, yeah. That's, that's one that has been open for a little while. Um, and this... This, I guess, is a good sort of more general tip on uh, like writing documentation. Um, you don't want to make assumptions about 
what people know and like what is going to be hard for yeah. what's going to be hard and what's going to be easy for different people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this sometimes is something yeah, I, I sometimes, see come up in a lot of documentation circles of uh, using right. words like simply. Right. And I think I think that the intention is to try and make it seem less scary um, of like you just have to do this and like it'll be easy to do whatever. Yeah. Uh, but then to be the person who gets stuck on that step, it then like not only do you have a problem now, you got some kind of bug, something's not working, but also you're doubting yourself of like, oh God, this was supposed to be easy and I'm having a hard yeah. time with it. Like maybe I just shouldn't do it. And then that sends you into like a whole imposter syndrome spiral. And if you just didn't say simply, you could avoid all of that. Yeah, and it looks like they're they're even linking to a conference talk, I believe. Ooh, nice. Can, Love a uh, good conference talk. Yeah, it looks like it's a conference talk about don't say it simply, which, yeah. so I actually, when I worked at my previous employer, I used to, so GitHub has a full docs team. We actually open sourced our docs last week. Um, cool. Yeah, so that's exciting. And we're actually, we're gonna have the team, we don't have to talk about now, but we held the team on next week to talk about open sourcing docs, uh, which awesome. is a nice little intro, um, talking to Gatsby about docs. Um, but I worked with documentation engineers in the past, and this is coming up in like even my writing, where I am yeah. always, even if it's a blog post or I'm just talking from stage at a conference, like I'm always on alert to make sure I'm not making assumptions because I've also been stuck on simple things uh, yeah. that are quote unquote simple. And you just don't know, like some people don't even start programming with Git. So like if you s simply tell people to write Git commit or whatever, right. like that could be like, wait, hold on, slow down. I don't know what Git is. <laughs> and yeah. then you're like, oh, you don't know what Git is? And how do you not know Git? So that's like that, right. going back to my explanation about the React training folks who kind of avoid all the other stuff to just talk about React. Like by not saying simply and not doing all that stuff, you can just focus on the teaching, the thing you want to talk about. And if the things are quote unquote simple, um, you don't have to say they're simple. You can just link to them and have people go back and check out the cliff notes and other things. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry to go into yeah. my soapbox. No, no, I, I, I think that that's a really good point that you make about like trying to limit the distractions of like, you're trying to teach them this topic, just focus on that topic and like anything like get things or I don't know, just anything that you don't actually need to do that one objective, just don't don't do it. Like teach them that somewhere else and then you can link them to it, but just focus, like limit your scope. <laughs> you can only teach them so many things at once. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious though, like, uh, I'm sorry to go on this tangent more in documentation because I feel like <laughs> since having you and I think, uh, list like the, all the viewers are sort of enjoying the conversation as well. Like, what is your, what's your approach to getting better at documentation? Like, are there like, if I know, if I want to learn JavaScript, mm -hmm. I write tests or I go build a small little project, but let's like, away someone if they want to get better and be more aware are there like tools yeah. of the trade that you recommend um i mean the like cheap answer is you just have to keep doing it yeah uh like i something that i something that i try to do uh is i have a like til today i learned repo where i just have a bunch of folders and it's like not meant for other people's consumption necessarily it's just a way for me to track like these are the things that i'm learning about um i guess kind of like a digital garden where everything's in various levels of done um but that's a good way to practice distilling like just the basic information that you need to know and then you can like link out to other things of, like this is the article that i was reading when i had this thought um and then also like looking at other people's documentation like i really like looking at dev.2 or to i don't actually know how they say it <laughs> i think um, officially they're dev uh oh, but everybody <laughs> adds the uh the dot to yeah yeah but there's a bunch of there's a bunch of different ways that people explain things on here um and some some of the articles are better than others but i think that it's a good just like having this sort of bucket of things to choose from you can look through the way that different people's different people have explained the same topics and see like oh i really like the way that they tied in this analogy and i really like this diagram and like just trying to build your own style based off of the way that other people have done it um i guess analogies is also a good 
a good tip, just general, like helping people understand a thing. Like if you can relate it back to like a similar concept that they already know, um, like Maggie Appleton, Ableton has a really great talk um, about React metaphors, like visual metaphors to help you understand React. Um, and she's got like one that's like React as a potato plant, which is like not a comparison that you would normally make, <laughs> but then I think it really helps people who are new to it understand, yeah, this is the one, uh, understand like how, how does this thing, like basically what mental model can I build for this idea yeah. um, that is super abstract? Like how do you make that more concrete and relatable? Nice, I should talk about the DOM too as well. <laughs> Yeah, she, I would like to hear her, her explanation of the virtual dom. Yeah, it's it's very cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I would definitely, definitely recommend uh, checking that out. I, I just like the video because I know it goes into a, a magical place on YouTube into a like playlist. So I'll watch that in a bit too as well after we're done yeah. talking. Um, but yeah, thanks for going to that, that little tangent for me. Um, yeah, I love it. I'll I, talk I'm about... fascinated, yeah, the, just hearing <laughs> from the experts and how they approach things. Yeah, it looks like, uh, I'm not sure how apt it is for, this one has 118 comments. Oh, wow. Uh, TypeScript migration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants TypeScript. Does Gatsby run on TypeScript like right now? One. I don't know. I think we're in the process of migrating. <laughs> um, yeah, well, th I mean, there's 64 people who are interested, at least, in the yeah. conversation. Let's, oh, wow. Big I like checklist. to roll in the bottom and see. Right. Uh, so it looks like people are actually migrating stuff. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so everybody's sort of up for grabs. Which sounds like a great, yeah, it looks like we have an open emerge PR. Woohoo! Um, so Good it looks job. like things are, things are happening in that world as of yesterday. Um, nice. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's it, honestly like just going through issues and like understanding the history of the project is a good way. If you don't know where to start and jump in, seeing if you can understand the conversations that are happening right now, like what I'm just doing right now while you're here and keeping me honest, um, you can see that they're, there's some type definitions that have been important. I don't write TypeScript or I just sort of consume it I don't when either. I have to. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't actually understand all the ins and outs of it. Uh, but it looks like there's, yeah, type composer. So yeah, it looks like they're adding TypeScript um, to files, which is pretty cool. Which I had a joke about um, adding TypeScript to my project during Hacktoberfest and if it would happen. Uh, and it seems like <laughs> it seems like it happened for Gatsby. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, That's amazing. the beauty of open source. You don't have to know TypeScript to get TypeScript into your project. <laughs> no, this is this is amazing because uh, yeah, I was joking because I didn't think that would ever happen, but it seems like <laughs> this is not only labeled Hacktoberfest, but it is literally a TypeScript migration. Yeah, um, amazing, and yeah, thanks Blaine for kicking off this conversation. And I think mm -hmm. it actually starts with that too as well, like. It's it's probably I don't know uh, I guess I can check and see if Blaine's a Gatsby employee as well. Um, he used to be. He used to be he left okay. recently, but he was. Okay, yeah. So at least he oh he even like shouted out and said that Gatsby is <laughs> actually looking to make this migration happen. So yeah, so basically shouting it out and saying this is the thing that we're looking for is a great way to get con contribution, um, like eyeballs on things. Um, but it seems like yeah, very popular uh, issue. Yeah, if, if we gave away points for people who open issues, um, we wouldn't do that for obvious reasons and spam. But <laughs> uh, Blaine would have a lot of points because a lot of people have jumped on there and um, quote unquote uploaded it with their uh, with their responses. Yeah. yeah so uh, we have like roughly ten minutes left. Did you have anything else we wanted to um, showcase? Um, as um, issues? I guess we can talk through. We can talk through at a high level, like how if you want to get started, this all sounds great. Yeah. Uh, how would you? do that like how would you set it up locally um so i guess the first thing that you would do is go through and like assign yourself to the issue or we yeah, would assign you to we the issue we didn't even talk about that the docs themselves live inside the mono repo is that correct that yeah yeah at? so there's this whole docs thing and actually like it's kind of confusing like our site now uh when we when we merge the dot org and the dot com site there's now like a separate repo that's actually uh building our .com site. Um, but you can still use this repo to uh, to like run it locally. And you'll see the docs in like the old version of the doc site, um, but at, at least it'll let you like check your markdown and stuff. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it it sounds confusing, but it sounds like there was a migration between two different places where the docs were. Uh, so if you are confused when you run it, I'm sure you can probably ask a question. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There's also, I guess this is a good chance to plug there. There's like an Ask Gatsby JS Twitter um, that you can at them. And then for now, you can use the Hacktoberfest hashtag. Um, and that, I think that our customer success team looks at this and they can either help you solve the issue or they can direct your question to the right person internally. Um, and then... Oh, here's the uh, the note about TypeScript. Hey, there you go. Is yes. that the pinned one? Uh, this is, oh, it looks like a plugin to, I guess, consume it. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's not actually converting TypeScript, um, but new in Gatsby TypeScript support. But folks interested in TypeScript, definitely look yeah. at the pinned tweet um, and check that out. But Sean's saying the Ask Gatsby is a, a great idea, which it is. Um, I think GitHub has one too as well. We call it GitHub Help. Um, so it's easy. Nice. If someone sort of like shouts in the ether, which is Twitter, yeah. and says, hey, why is GitHub doing this thing? What exactly. I do, I usually just at mention GitHub Help. And then they'll nice. they'll respond uh, that way, especially <laughs> especially if someone's like Brian on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> this thing on GitHub's not working. Are you moved it? And I'm like, I don't know. This is a big project. Uh, this <laughs> right. at mention GitHub help and then like slowly back away. Um, yeah, which is always helpful. Yeah, especially as somebody who's new to a company, it's helpful to be like, go. These other fine folks will help you out because I can't. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a, a good mention there. And um, I forgot how we got here. Oh, we were talking about the docs um, and where they live. Oh, yeah. So so you'll clone this whole repo. Um, and then you can see there's like all of these individual uh, markdown files. So yeah. all, of our, all of our documentation is written in markdown. Um, and then if you were going to like, mm, where is it? It's, yeah. So then this thing you could see... Uh, I think if you went to like our actual docs site, so like gatsby.com slash docs slash whatever that title was, um, was, like adding analytics or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think you might even be able to just type it into the URL, just like add it afterwards. Yeah, I was going to um, leverage the, uh, the beautiful search here. There you go. Search. Hooray. Yeah, so this is what it looks like on the live site. And then if you were to go back and look at that markdown, you could just like check for yourself that it works, that it's the same text. Yeah. Um, so when you clone the repo, uh, you'll have to do, you'll have to like CD change directory into the www folder. Uh, and that's the actual like directory where the, the site is or like the old version of the site is um and then you'll have to start you'll do like npm install in there and then you'll uh what is the start command i think it's just like gatsby develop gatsby develop yeah or is yeah. that the yeah that's what i used if i had a gatsby site i'm not sure if that's the same as uh yeah, well, because the www folder just like is a Gatsby site. It's oh, the Gatsby yeah, yeah, site that makes sense. Where yeah, the docs, yeah, <laughs> meta yeah, using Gatsby to build Gatsby, which is also exactly. <laughs> I, I started that tangent about the contributing MD and the contribute being a link to the Gatsby site, and the fact that Gatsby builds sites and that's the tool itself, it makes sense that the content itself is inside of a Gatsby <laughs> site. Um, so yeah. that way, it's a, a way to dog food. <laughs> exactly. Dog food exactly. Stuff. Um. Yeah, yeah, and so then from inside of that www directory, that's the place that you would like start or start uh, Gatsby develop. Um, and then you'll like go to localhost and be able to see your stuff. Um, so at least for adding for adding new documentation, you'll like make a new directory or make a new markdown file in that docs directory. And then there's also a sidebar file that like uh, you can this? add a link to, yeah, to make it show up in there. Oh, um, excellent. And all of this is written in, we have a- in The contributing see. docs? Yeah, there's like a, a doc that's specific to uh, contributing- Docs contribution. Documentation, yeah, exactly. Oh, so um, I'm intrigued, sidebar. Yeah, and it's basically right now it's it's just like this giant list of all of the, <laughs> all the docs and what order they go in. Um, 
something to like tease a future change, I guess, uh, something that I'm hoping to work on is sort of like reorganizing the documentation that we already have, uh, because there's a lot of it. And like, as the community has found new features that they've wanted to add, and we've kind of like kept building this thing up right now, it's a little bit unwieldy and hard to find what you're looking for, especially if you're new and don't know where to look. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that'll, that'll get easier in the future. Cool. All TBD. Yeah. And I, while you were talking, I was trying to get it running on a code space, which now is running, but I think, I'm not sure if we Ooh. have, have the time to be able to <laughs> see yeah. the into docs. It, uh, um, yeah. You'll actually go to, instead of the docs directory, you'll go to slash www. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And then the, like uh, the docs is the folder that the content lives in. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to do a lot more npm installing and stuff like that because none of this is uh, <laughs> yeah there's built. a lot of a lot of packages <laughs> yeah so yeah we'll we'll leave that as is and um uh what i'll do is uh you did i don't know are you i don't know if that was you that dropped a link in the chat i didn't even grab your twitch handle uh to oh yeah that's me Oops. okay so i just re i we have to make you a vip uh to allow you ah. to post <laughs> links um, you're a very important person here. Um, so I failed to actually ask you your Twitch handle before we started, because it is apparently different That's than okay. your I... handle. <laughs> no, I honestly, I didn't have a Twitch handle. I made an account. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Welcome to the Twitch. Woo. And, uh, Thanks. all the, all the viewers too as well. Welcome. Thanks for, uh, chatting with us and learning about Gatsby and contributing. Um, actually any, any last words that you wanted to share, like where we could find your work, uh, besides gatsby.com slash docs. Um, um, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Twitter at Megan E. Sully, M-E-G-A-N-E-S-U-L-L-I. Um, and yeah, I just talk about random things, Excellent. mostly tech I mean, related, sounds sometimes like Twitter. not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw a tweet of someone who created a Twitter list, uh, for all the folks who, who are in, who are developers who actually tweet code. Um, oh, cool. which is a thing that I never even thought about even doing. Like I write code all the time, but right. Like, tweet code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Sometimes I, guess a small I don't know. Population. <laughs> yeah. If I think of like a joke, like a tech related joke, I'll post that, but mostly it's like blog posts that I find interesting or have written stuff like that. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks again for the conversations and, um, yeah, folks reach yeah. out. Uh, hit the follow button if you want to hear more about Open Source Friday and contributions. Uh, this video will be on the YouTube channel and uh, I guess a few days. Uh, give, give me the weekend. And um, also let us know if uh, there are projects you want to hear from. Um, also a uh, big fan of getting projects here and introductions as well. Cool. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing. <laughs> yeah. All right.